Hello there, all of you absolutely lovely people. Once again, this is Dax, and today we are going to be talking about George Carlin. Now, I know it might seem strange that a channel about hermetic magic might be discussing an atheistic comedian, but bear with me on this. Let's not forget the stated purpose of this channel is magical self-empowerment for the purpose of creating a better world for us all. And it is impossible to create a truly better world unless we have a wise and deep understanding of what's going on in the world around us. George Carlin is, in my opinion, one of the greatest social commentators produced in the last century. If you want to understand what's going on in our society, if you want a deep understanding of what we need to fix, you study the work of George Carlin. Where's the morality in that? I don't understand our values. By the way, speaking of American values, are we about due to start bombing some small country that only has a marginally effective air force? Seems to me like we're a couple of weeks overdue to drop high explosives on helpless civilians. People who have no argument with us whatsoever. I think we ought to be out there doing what we do best, gang, making big holes in other people's countries. I hate to be repetitious, but God, we are a warlike lot, you know? We can't stand not to be fucking with somebody. We couldn't wait for that Cold War to be over, could we? Just couldn't wait for that Cold War to be over so we could go and play with our toys in the sand. Go play with our toys in the sand. And while we're not invading some sovereign nation or setting it on fire from the air, which is more fun, then we're usually declaring war on something here at home. Do you ever notice that? We love to do that, don't we? We love to declare war on things here in America. Anything we don't like about ourselves, we have to declare war on it. We don't do anything about it, but we just declare war on it. We got a war, it's the, only, it's the only metaphor we have in our public discourse for solving a problem, it's called declaring a war. We got a war on poverty, the war on crime, war on litter, the war on cancer, the war on drugs. But you ever notice, there's no war on homelessness, is there? Nah, no war on homelessness, you know why? There's no money in that problem. There's no money in Now, that George Carlin is a man whose career lasted from the 1950s up into the 2000s. The man was on stage for the vast majority of his life. And doing this is what he loved doing. It was his calling. It was his purpose. But when he started his career, and in the beginning it looked like his career was going to do really well the way it was headed. But very early on in his career, he played by the rules. He wore a suit and tie during a time when you were expected as a comedian to wear a suit and tie. His comedy was very family friendly because basically he was working for a television studio. But then he stepped away from all of that. He cut his income by about 90% in order to recreate himself into an edgy comedian who focused on calling out society for the crimes he would see it committing. Earlier on in his career, and we're talking about the 1960s here, he was actually taken to the Supreme Court for vulgarity used in his comedy acts. And the Supreme Court did uphold that the FCC had the authority to prevent people from using specific words during times when children would be watching. In response to this, he came up with his famous the words you can't say on television routine. And comedy was changed forever. The trouble with it is trying to decide what to call these words, man, or trying to decide what to call this whole thing. You know, what are these words that I'm talking about? They're just words that we've decided, sort of decided not to use all the time. That's about the only thing you can really say about them for sure. That they're just some words, not many either, just a few, that we've decided well, we won't use them all the time. Sometimes, well, hell yeah. Sometimes it's okay, but not all the time. That's, and they're the only words that seem to have that restriction. I mean, there are a lot of words you can say whenever you want, you know? Pneumonia! Nobody gives you a lot of... All right, you can't yell it in the hospital a great deal, but what the hell? There are words that you can say, no problem. Topography! No one has ever gone to jail for screaming topography. But there are some words that you can go to jail for. There are some words 
that we just have decided we will not say all the time. Sometimes, okay. If you're running through the jungle chasing somebody that we're at war with, you can holler them. If you're shooting a criminal, it's okay. It's the all-American thing. Dirty fucking crook. <laughs> but if you're with the bishop's wife at lunch, it's better not to ask for the goddamn lettuce. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just like we've decided there'd be some words we won't say all the time. And I was just trying to find out which words they were. For sure. All of them. I wanted a list. Because nobody gives you a list. That's the problem. They don't give you a list. Wouldn't you think it'd be normal if they didn't want you to say something to tell you what it is? Nobody even tells you when you're a kid what the words are that you're supposed to avoid. You have to say them to find out which ones they are. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> ah! Oh, fuck! <laughs> That's two. Some of all right some of the time. Ass is all right on television. You can say on television things like, well, you've made a perfect ass of yourself tonight. But you can't say, hey, let's go get some ass. <laughs> on those two-way words. And that's it. That's what I was trying to find. The words that were always dirty, not just part of the time, but completely filth. Well, in, in looking for these words, I kept finding new categories. We have so many ways of describing these dirty words. It's, well, we have more ways to describe dirty words than we actually have dirty words. That seems a little strange to me. It seems to indicate that somebody was awfully interested in these words. They kept referring to them. They called them bad words, dirty, filthy, foul, vile, vulgar, coarse, in poor taste, unseemly, street talk, gutter talk, locker room language, <laughs> barracks talk, body, naughty, saucy, raunchy, rude, crude, lewd, lascivious, indecent, profane, obscene, blue, off color, <laughs> risque, suggestive, <laughs> cursing, cussing, swearing, and all I could think of was shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. <laughs> Now, once again, let's go back to the fact that this is a social reform channel. Yes, it is a magic channel, but it's also social reform. Our civilization has some major problems with it that need to be dealt with. And George Carlin had this wonderful, beautiful way of pointing out the problems that our civilization had in a way that could get people to laugh. I particularly love the routine that he did about consumerism. Quality, value, style, service, selection, convenience, economy, savings, performance, experience, hospitality, low rates, friendly service, name brands, easy terms, affordable prices, money back guarantee, free installation. <laughs> free admission, free appraisal, free alterations, free delivery, free estimates, free home trial, and free parking. No cash, no problem. <laughs> No kidding, no fuss, no must, no risk, no obligation, no red tape, no hidden charges, no down payment, no entry fee, no purchase necessary, no one will call on you, no payments or interest till December, and no parking. <laughs> Limited time only though, so act now, order today, send no money, offer good while supplies last, two to a customer, each item sold separately, batteries not included, mileage may vary. <laughs> All sales are final, allow six weeks for delivery, some items not available, some assembly required, some restrictions may apply. <laughs> Shop by mail, order by phone, try it in your home, get one for your car. All entries become our property, employees not eligible, entry fees not refundable, local restrictions apply, void where prohibited except in Indiana. <laughs> So come on in. Come on in for a free demonstration and a free consultation with our friendly professional staff. Our courteous and knowledgeable sales representatives will help you make a selection that's just right for you and just right for your budget. And say, don't forget to pick up your free gift. A classic, deluxe, custom, designer, luxury, prestige, high quality, premium select, gourmet pocket flashlight. <laughs> And if you act now, we'll include an extra added free complimentary bonus gift, a classic deluxe custom designer luxury prestige high quality premium select gourmet leather style wallet with detachable keychain and a pencil holder. 
It's our way of saying thank you. And if you're not completely satisfied, you pay nothing. Simply return the unused portion for a full refund. No questions asked. It's our way of saying thank you. Keep your free gift. Actually, it's our way of saying bend over just a little further and let us stick this big dick into your ass a little bit deeper. You see, one of the biggest problems that our civilization has is that it functions by diminishing the individual for the sake of the society. And that is a complete reversal of what society is actually about. The purpose of a civilization is to support the people. It is not the purpose of the people to support the civilization. And George Carlin was brilliant at pointing this out. Now, once again, George Carlin was an atheist. He didn't believe in the afterlife. He did not believe in magic. He did not believe in anything metaphysical. In fact, George Carlin once said he worships the sun because he can see it, and he prays to Joe Pesci because he seems like a guy who could get things done. But don't let the fact that he was an atheist deter you from listening to what he actually had to say. Always remember, hermetic magic involves the pursuit of true wisdom. And true wisdom can be found from any source. And believe me, when it comes to social reform, George Carlin is a master. Last time I saw you, I just want to talk a little bit about that war in the Persian Gulf. Big doings in the Persian Gulf. You know my favorite part of that war? It's the first war we ever had that was on every channel plus cable. And the war got good ratings, too, didn't it? Got good ratings. Well, we like war. We like war. We're a war-like people. We like war because we're good at it. And you know why we're good at it? Because we get a lot of practice. This country's only 200 years old, and already we've had 10 major wars. We average a major war in this country every 20 years, so we're good at it. And it's a good thing we are. We're not very good at anything else anymore. Can't build a decent car, can't make a TV set or a VCR worth a fuck. Got no steel industry left, can't get health care to our old people, can't educate our young people, but we can bomb the shit out of your country, all right? Huh? We can bomb the shit out of your country, all right? Especially if your country is full of brown people. Oh, we like that, don't we? That's our hobby. That's our new job in the world, bombing brown people. Iraq, Panama, Grenada, Libya, you got some brown people in your country, tell them to watch the fuck out, or we'll goddamn bomb them. Well, when's the last white people you can remember that we bombed? Can you remember the last white, can you remember any white people we've ever bombed? The Germans, the Germans are the only ones, and the only reason for that is because they were trying to cut in on our action. They wanted to dominate the world. Bullshit, that's our fucking job. That's our fucking job. So anyway, once again, this is Dax. Always remember, you are important, you are loved, your needs are valid, but the same is also true of everyone else. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.